definite integrals. I said uh, definite integrals are integrals in the form this. Integrals in the form this. All right. Definite integrals are integrals in the form this. So you have integral. You have e and b here. We are A and B are called the limits of the integral. We are A and B are called the limits of the integral. A is called the upper limit. B is called the lower limit. Is that your limit? Uh, A is upper limit. B is lower limit. So it's called a definite integral. Um, usually, usually for problems involving definite integrals, most of the times the value of a is greater than the value of b. When it comes to definite integrals, in most cases, this value is greater than this. In most cases, um, think of this. Let, let me just explain. Then we'll solve. How do you solve problems on definite integrals? The idea is very simple. When it comes to definite integrals, it's just simply uh, integrating what you have here and then substituting this value. Alright? In mathematical terms, this one here, uh, the integral of a b f of x dx is usually equal to this, the integral of f of x, integral of f of x dx, yeah? into a minus the integral of f of x dx into b. So you should be happy. Uh, this is like a mathematical expression for definite integrals. I'll take a simple example and we solve this. Look up. I'll take a simple example and explain this. So example, let's say I'm asked to evaluate Let's say I'm asked to evaluate this call here 5, call here 2 of 3x squared dx. So here's the problem on definite integral. How do you solve this? This is equal to, now hang on, let's look up, look up, look up, look up. When it comes to definite integral, listen up. When it comes to definite integral, your first task, of course, in this case here, Upper limit is 5, lower limit is 2. In this case here, guess what to do? Ignore the limits for the mean time. Just take the integral of what I have here, 3x squared dx. Obviously for this, I'm using general method. General method means this equal to, this gives you 3x 2 plus 1, all over 2 plus 1, just add 1. Then plus c. That's the general method. This is now equal to 3x cubed all over 3 plus c. From here, this cancel this. My answer is equal to x cubed plus c. So if I take this one here, if I integrate this, I'll have x cubed plus c. At this point now, break in your limits. So this is now equal to. Um, x cubed plus c with your limits 5, what is it? 5 and 2 so 5 and 2 how do you solve this? we said it's equal to this one here x cubed plus c into 5 minus so we said the first one into your upper limit minus the second one here x cubed plus c into your lower limit 2 now, what does this mean? I will simply put x as 5 here, yeah? in this case. Put x as 2 here, yeah? in this case. So, it's not as if I'm looking for 5, or this one is square. No, that's not the idea. The idea is that in this case here, yeah, x becomes 5. In this case here, yeah, x becomes 2. So, this now becomes, I'm having this as 5 over 3 plus c minus, this becomes uh, 2 over 3 plus c. I have this. So this is now equal to 5 over 3 is 1 to 5. 
plus C minus, since minus is affecting everything here, leave this in the bracket in the meantime. 2 to the power 3 gives you 8 plus C and others. This is equal to 1 to 5 plus C minus the base minus 8 plus minus minus C. If I collect like that, this is equal to 1 to 5 here minus 8. This one here plus C. This one here minus C. Observe that this one cancels this. So I'm now left with 1 to 5. Minus 8. What's the value? Huh? 1, 1, 7. So that's your answer. So, um, here are your ticks. Listen. Here are your ticks. Listen, here are your ticks. When you solve definite problems or definite integral, you expect something like an answer or a number, as you can see. So, when you're doing definite integral, it gives you a number or an answer. Number 1. Number 2. When it comes, listen, number two, when it comes to evaluating integrals under the concept of definite integral, putting C here is optional. So I can say integral of 3x squared is equal to just x cubed. I can decide to omit a uh, constant. It's still okay. Why? Because at last, the constant you can see here. So when it comes to uh, evaluating, now look at this. Look at this. Let's assume I didn't put constant. Let's assume I just say x cubed. This will be equal to x cubed considering 5 minus x cubed considering 2. And that will be equal to 5 to power 3 minus 2 to power 3. That's equal to 1 to 5 minus 8. That's equal to 117. It saves up the stress of constant. So when it comes to definite integral, putting constant is optional. So that's it. But I would advise you to put it to, for example, but just know that it's optional. So that's, that's the concept of definite integral. The concept is the goal. Let's come this one here. Let's say we are asked to evaluate this. Now, what do you do? This is a, a, a sample problem under definite integral. So we said your case is simple. First of all, ignore limits. Pick up this one first. So this will now be equal to the integral of sine x plus exponential x. Dx. And that's now equal to, this becomes, uh, what do you call it? This, 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 integral of sine x dx plus this, 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 integral of exponential x dx. And that's equal to, if I integrate sine x, this one there, minus cos x plus integrate exponential x, this one there, exponential x. I said at this point, you can put plus C or you can omit it. Just for spacing, I'm permitting plus C. Here, for example, I'd like to put plus C. But of course, contact will cancel out, so why the stress? So I'm having this. So if I now carry this one here, under the consideration of the limits, this is now equal to um, minus cos x plus exponential x. This limit here, 1.4. This limit here, 0 0.2. Observe that if I introduce limit, I usually use square brackets, not round brackets. Check with example 2. When I introduce limit, it was square brackets. It's very uh, intentional. Please. Use square brackets, not round brackets. So this will now be equal to. Okay, if we do it here. So this will now be equal to um, minus cos x plus exponential x under upper limit 1.4. This minus, next up it becomes minus cos x plus exponential x under 0 0.2. So I have this. So that's now equal to, this one gives you, um, at this point, now use round bracket, minus cos 1.4 plus exponential 1.4, this minus into minus cos, yeah, 0 0.2 plus exponential 0 0.2, for so 
uh, wrong sum, this is equal to give me, I don't know, punch everything here. Oh, fine, give me them separately. Give me minus cos 1.4, what's the answer? Minus cos 1.4, what do you get? Minus 0 0.99 plus, give me exponential 1.4. So it's easier that way. 
So hence the integral, hence the integral of sec square x minus 1 dx will now be equal to we said take this 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 becomes the integral of sec square x dx minus integral of 1 that's integral of 1 times the x 1 times the x is the yeah, x so I have this equal to if I integrate sec square x of course you have an x there so it becomes than x minus if I integrate the x what do I get there gives you x you can put plus c which I said is optional because than x minus integrate the x gives you x so um, recalling the limits this now becomes than x minus x into pi over 4 and z What's pi? What's the pi? Please. When it comes to when it comes to um, uh, your normal maths, pi is 3.142. Sorry. When it comes to normal maths, pi is 3.142. That's 22 by 7. When it comes to angular arithmetic, pi is what there? 180. Please. Pi is 180. So for cases of trick function, the value of pi is not 22 by 7. No. It's 180. So in this case now, pi, but, okay, um, fine, but you want to, but pi is equal to 180. So if I say pi over 4, that becomes 180 over 4. That's what the word there? That's the pi. That's what the pi. So hence, it means that this is now equal to times x minus x into 45 and there so I have this all right work this out this is now equal to uh, this first one first tan x tan x minus x into 45 minus times x minus x into there. This will now be equal to put x as this becomes than 45 minus 45 minus put tan as 0 and it becomes than 0 minus there, so I have this. Please give me 45. What do you get? In 2 dB, what do you uh, want? Minus 45 minus times 0 is 0 minus 0. I have this. This is equal to 1 minus 45 is minus 44 minus 0 minus 0 is 0 this is what then minus 44 that's your answer this is how you solve this problem